Welcome back to part two of the Tune I. To start off with, we need to create a polygon primitive sphere. We need to scale it down to match the inside eyelid radius, so 0.9. And we need to rotate it so it's pointing forward, so we'll rotate it 90 degrees on the X. With that created, we want to make sure that we come up to Modify, Freeze Transformation. This will zero out all the controls and allow us to have the aim work properly. Before we get uh, started on the aim, we'll want to make sure that we actually apply the texture uh, since when we deform it, we want the pupil to stay the same size while the rest of the eye is able to be deformed. To do that, it, uh, we're going to use a projection node and project onto the surface a ramp shader for the color of our eye. So to get started on that, I'm going to open up my Hypershade, so Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade. I need to create a base material for my eye. I'm just going to use a Lambert. Under 2D Textures, I'm going to create a ramp. And under Utilities, I'm going to create a projection node. How this is going to work is I'm going to connect the ramp to the projection node using middle mouse to drag onto that and I'm going to select default. From the projection node I'm going to middle mouse drag that onto Lambert 2 and select default as well. What this does is it applies the color to the projection node and then the projection node to the Lambert so that uh, we can create a 3D projection node onto the surface and have our uh, pupil always stay the same diameter no matter how much the eye deforms. So double clicking on the ramp 1 shader, I can now come over to my ramp and edit the colors. The first thing that I'll want to do is change the type from V ramp to circular ramp. This will give us the general shape of the eye. Uh, starting with the red, I will change that to black. I'll move the green down and then drag the blue down pretty close to it. Changing the blue to more of a kind of a seafoam green. Uh, this is pretty much just up to you however this looks. Uh, most of the time the iris color is going to be a little bit darker and a little bit more muted uh, than your iris color and what that does is gives that little bit of a faded outlook. So as I scrunch this down, you can see now that you're kind of just getting that little bit of a fade out around the edge to define the uh, the pupil a little bit more. Uh, your interpolation types uh, will give you a little bit sharper. So when we go to render this, this eye will look a little bit fuzzy because of the gradients on there. I find that exponential up gives you a little bit better of a render, and it'll, it'll turn out a little bit nicer. So opening back up our hypershade, I'm going to middle mouse drag our Lambert 2 onto our eye. And right off the bat you can see that it is placed nicely right dead center. Uh, but we want to create a projection node that we can actually edit and uh, manipulate. So double clicking on our projection node in our attribute editor, I can now click on interactive placement. As soon as I select that, I get an option to create a placement node. I want to select that. You'll now see something that kind of looks like your uh, planar UV mapping. Uh, this just allows us to scale and change the projection width on the, uh, on the texture onto the surface. If you want to, you can go ahead and change the size. Uh, for now, I'm just going to leave it as is. So now, how we're going to get this to always stay parented is I'm going to pin constraint, or uh, excuse me, point constraint uh, this node onto the UV or the vertex of the eye. So selecting the sphere, I'm going to hold right click and go into vertex. I'm going to select that central vertex and then shift select my placement node. Coming up under Constrain, I want to click on Points on Poly. 
this will parent the node to the point on the uh, polygon model. You'll notice that the placement node shifts off to the side. I still have no idea why that does that, but uh, it seems to be the fix to do that is inside your attribute editor you have your rotate axis. If you take uh, whatever the value is and apply a negative value, so negative 90, that shifts it to the front correct position and then shifting it on the Y negative 9 degrees reorients it back to the correct uh, orientation. Not sure why we have to do that, but that seems to be what works. So now if I select my eye and I rotate it any direction, you'll notice that the projection node is always pointing at that vertice. After we have that, I need to create a curve that will be our locator, uh, our aim constraint, so that the eye will always follow that. So under create nerve primitive circle, I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Then I'm going to move it forward a couple of units, just so it's far enough that we can grab it easy and change the aim. I'm going to freeze its transformation, so modify freeze transformation, resets all of our values. And then just to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to go into Control Vertex, and I'm going to adjust the shape of this a little bit. So I'm going to squash it, select these guys, and squash them in a little bit, and that just gives us a little bit more of a eye shape. So with that, I'm going to select my curve, Shift Select the Eyeball, and under Constrain Aim, I'm going to click in the Option box, and what we're looking for is the aim vector. If I reset these settings, you'll notice it defaults to the X, but right now our I is looking on the Z, so what we need to change is the aim vector to Z. So if I change that to 1 and X to 0, I can now hit Add. You'll notice that the X, Y, and Z have changed. This is indicating that this curve is now driving my sphere. So now, wherever I move this, you'll notice that the eye looks and the 2D plate or the uh, projection node follows the eye. So I'm going to set that back to zero. And now we need to create the deformer that's going to deform the eye and the eyelids. If I open up my outliner, so window outliner. The shapes that I want to deform are the eyeball itself and both the inner and the outer eyelid, leaving the uh, lofted surfaces alone since the eyelids are driving the lofted surfaces. So I'm going to select Nerve Sphere 1, 2, and Polysphere 1, minimize my outliner, and then under Create Deformer Lattice, I'm going to click in the option box. If I reset these, under Divisions, uh, we want just a square cube, so that's going to be divisions 2 by 2 by 2. Under grouping, I want to group the base and the lattice together, and under outside lattice, I want to transform all points. Going create. I now have a lattice around my eyeball. So if I hold right click and go into lattice points, I can select these points and now deform my eye to whatever shape I want and all of my other nodes still work. So I still have the blinking eyelids and I still have the correct aim. To make this a little bit more user friendly I'm going to create manipulators that will be able to drive the shape of the eye. So to start off with I need to select each corner of the eyelid uh, lattice box and create clusters. So I'll repeat that for each of the corners Create Deformer Cluster. Hit G on the keyboard is the shortcut to repeat last command. Now that I have those, if I select these clusters, I'll be able to deform my eye just like I selected those lattice points. But since these can be a little bit hard to move, I'm going to create a uh, manipulator that I'll be able to parent uh, these clusters to, to be able to edit those. 
So under create, NURB, circle, rotate it 90 degrees, pop into my front view. Holding X and middle mouse button, I can snap to the points in the upper corners, and I will scale down. Coming up to modify freeze transformation, just gets rid of all that history. And with my move tool, I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate, hold X to snap to grid, and repeat for each of these corners. Making sure I go in and selecting all three and going edit, or sorry, modify freeze transformation, just to make sure all those are zeroed out. Now what I want to do is select my control and then select my uh, curve, come up to constrain and parent constraint. What this does is anytime I have, excuse me, I did that backwards. You want to select your curve and then your control, come up to constrain and parent. Now, whenever you select your uh, curve, you can now edit that and it will drive the shape of the lattice. So we'll do that for all the other corners. Select our curve, select our control point, constrain, parent. Curve, cluster, G, last command used, G. So now we have our deformable eye. Now that we have all these, we don't have a use to uh, see the lattice, the clusters, or this placement node. So I'm just going to go in, select each of the clusters, select the lattice, and select the placement node. With all those selected, I'm just going to press Control H, which just hides it all. So now I have my curve, which I can deform the eye. I have my eye blink control, so I can control where the eyelid is. And I have my aim, so the eye will look wherever the aim is. The next thing I need to do is be able to move everything. If I select all of my controls and try to move these all at once, you'll notice that the eyelids blink and well, it's a little hard to tell, but the aim is looking up as well. So what I need to do is create a master node where I can move the eye around the scene without having to edit everything. So right now I'm going to create a master curve. So create NURB circle, rotate it 90. This time I'm going to scale it up a little bit just so it covers all four points. Come up to modify, freeze transformation, gets rid of all those values. And now what I can do is parent all these guys to this curve. So I'll select each of these points, uh, group them, that way the group is parented instead of the actual objects, and then shift select my curve and hit P. So now if I select my curve, you'll notice that those controls are selected. I will do the same thing with each of these. Now if I select that, all of them are selected. And the last step is to select my curve and instead of parenting I need to group it but grouping it alone will not edit the aim constraint the aim will still be moving so I need to do one last step which is coming up to window hypergraph connections and I need to select all so both my group and the aim if I maximize that you'll now see that I have my aim control to my circle. If I zoom in on this a little bit, you'll notice that there is the aim constraint target to parent matrix. All I need to do is delete that. After that, all I have to do is select my eye, hit the up arrow to get into group two, shift select my master control, and hit P for parent. So now if I select my control, I can now move that around the scene freely while still being able to control the deformability and the blinking. And there you have it. You have a tune eye that is for fully deformable 
and controllable and movable. 